Hi guys, welcome to or back to our channel. I hope that you guys are excited for today's video. There's a lot that has been going on. Everything is honestly crazy right now and I have been a little bit better about keeping you guys updated, but definitely YouTube takes the most time to obviously film and edit stuff and get it out. So of course, that's like the last place that I usually update people. If you follow our other social medias, you will know that one of our kiddos got really, really, really sick. So today's video is mostly just about him and I'm just gonna kind of go over like what happened happened with him, what our plan is moving forward, just everything basically outlining Daxon. So if you've been following our journey, you will know that he has an esophageal atresia, which means his esophagus does not connect all the way together. He went through two surgeries, and I talked about this a lot in our last update video, so if you haven't watched that, go watch that one. That way you kind of know like what's going on as far as his recovery and where we're at. So in the last video, I talked about how he did not recover from his second surgery very well and he had pneumonia and he had developed an pneumatocele in his lung. So fast forward to where we're at now, I'm going to kind of tell you how that quickly became very, very bad for Daxon and just kind of like what has been going on basically so that you guys know. This also helps me to keep track of everything that has happened to the boys and be able to look back later and like reminisce on all of this stuff because I know it's going to go by fast and one day we're going to look back and not even remember that this stuff happened. Can't wait for that day. <laughs> So last time we had talked, he was on the oscillator. His support was basically maxed out. He was at like 80% oxygen needs. He had super high settings on all of his stuff on the ventilator. A couple days later, we were able to kind of bring him down, wean him off of his settings and get him back on the conventional ventilator. That lasted like a little bit and then we did not do so good. So we went back onto the oscillator and had no idea what was going on. It looked like the pneumatocele on his x-ray was actually getting smaller and they they were measuring it and it was getting smaller and so we thought everything was good like everything was fine we stopped getting the two a day x-rays and switched to like one every two days or so just because like i said everything looked good next thing we know he jumps clear up on support we are concerned about infection and what's going on in his lungs and we look in his lungs and he has multiple of these pneumatoceles now that have not only like multiplied but gotten bigger this was the scariest thing that has happened thus far like in our journey for sure so it just got really bad really quick and we had no idea what to do They were hoping that they could keep him unconventional that way It would kind of help with like the pressure that was going in and out of his lungs But he just was on so much support and like got so so sick He also like I said had pneumonia during this time So we were fighting that as well And then we started seeing that he was having like pus and fluid build up in his lungs Literally the craziest thing like he was doing so good and was pretty much to the point where they were getting ready to Evaluate him for his PDA class closure and then all of a sudden it was just like a 360 and he just got so so sick and it has been so stressful on us and just a lot has been going on. So basically we looked in his lungs and they were looking with ultrasound and x-ray. The problem is that as they were looking, they're like, so what can we do to fix this? And their, their thought process was we can stick a tube into his lung and drain out that air, get rid of all that air in there. Because the problem is eventually those pneumatocils can get so big that they pop. And then you have a bunch of free air in the chest cavity and the lungs and it's just like not good at all. Like, could be very, very, very bad for him. So, we were trying to look on ultrasound and chest x-ray and see, like, if there was a way that we could do that, but the problem is, like, they're not reliable and they don't help you see through the tissue very good. So, from ultrasound looking at his lungs, they couldn't tell if they were looking inside the lung, on top of the lung. They just don't know. And it's just too risky to try and go in and do that. There's basically a team called Interventional Radiology and a radiology doctor was the one who was going to be doing the procedure on him. So the other problem was that they really just wanted to be able to do it under CAT scan. They wanted to do a CT scan and take him downstairs, look at his lungs, figure out where they could put a tube because CT scan, basically what they do is they would put a grid, like a grid that we used in like middle school math and they would have like an atlas axis whatever and they would put it on top of his lung and he would go through ct they would be able to see all of the tissue and pinpoint exactly on that grid where they could insert chest tubes and kind of like what was going on the problem is that the ventilator that he was on with maxed out support basically can't travel it can't go downstairs and moving him to the conventional ventilator would be very dangerous during this time because of how much support he was needing and just like extreme extremely hard on his lungs. So that was where we were stuck. It's like, do you just wait? Like, 
what do you do during this situation? We also encountered a shift of doctors. I told you guys that our doctors change every two weeks, which is like one of the most frustrating things about the hospital, but don't get me wrong, like things have been a lot easier since all the boys have been there, but it is hard when you're constantly like having staff changing. I'm happy that we have primary nurses that stick with him. Daxon has literally the best primary nurse in the entire world. Like she's literally the best human. I love her so much. And she's been with him through like all of this. So she knows him so well. These pneumatoceles were taking up so much of his lung that it was pushing over onto his left lung and smushing his left lung and his heart. And if you looked at the x-ray, you could literally see like his two lungs. And then like if my thumbs are where the rib cage is or the spine, then you could just see his right lung was like just pushing over the rib cage and just smushing his other lung. It was, it was so scary. It was terrible. The doctors basically pulled us into a room and told us that he was considered very critically ill. And and they were very concerned about him at this point. We didn't know what to do. I mean, it's like a catch-22. You don't want to risk taking him downstairs and having him deteriorate on the way down, but you also don't want to just keep him up here and just keep letting these get bigger and bigger and bigger. She also told us that she was concerned that in Daxon's right lung, which is the one developing all these pneumatoceles, that they were concerned there may not be a lot of healthy lung tissue and that in the future we may have to remove his lung or pieces of his lung. Very hard news to like digest, but we were trying to like hope for the best and remain optimistic with that. You never want to hear like something like that is wrong with your child, obviously, but especially just thinking of his quality of life and how it would separate him from his brothers. It was really, really difficult conversation to have. We also had to ask the nurse practitioner and our palliative care team, were they concerned that Daxon was not going to make it? Like, was he going to die? And the team basically said, we don't know. We don't have like a good answer for you. And of course, it's something that we're concerned about with how critical that he is terrible to talk about like i would not wish that on my worst enemy to have to have a conversation about whether or not your kid is gonna make it and i'll kind of backtrack to that topic in a little bit but geez louise like it was just such a tough time like i really didn't know what the future was gonna hold for our family and it was very very scary so at this point they were trying to come up with the least invasive thing that they could do to try and treat this to the most invasive and start at the bottom and work their way up most invasive being going in with the procedure, taking him downstairs. Least invasive was pushing for antibiotics, seeing if, you know, they started looking better. They didn't start looking better. We, you know, were doing constant imaging and x-rays and ultrasounds and they were getting bigger and multiplying. At this point, it was, he is not going to make it if we don't do anything. So the next thing that they decided they were going to try and do, since the lung on that side just needed a break, it needed rest, and they were concerned, like I said, that he didn't even have like healthy tissue working over there. They were really concerned that that lung is just causing more harm than help. So their goal basically was to move his breathing tube from ventilating both lungs to only ventilating his left lung. And the thought process behind that was giving that right lung a break. And if it's not really working anyways, then what's the point of having it ventilating both lungs right now? All we're doing is pushing air into those pockets, those pneumatoceles. So they decided that they would try and do that. They took the tube and moved it to ventilating only his left lung. And he actually did really well with that procedure. He's such a trooper. I mean, this kid isn't even supposed to be born yet. And he's going through so many surgeries and operations. And he just like takes it like a champ. It, it blows my mind how, how tough these babies are. He actually did great with it. And then after like an hour or so, he just was not ventilating well and we could see his carbon dioxide was increasing and his oxygen needs were going up. He had to be put back on the oscillator. That settings were maxed out. So it just proved that it was not what he needed. The only good thing about that was that it told us that he did have some healthy lung tissue in his right lung because if he didn't, he wouldn't even notice that his right lung wasn't helping him out anymore. And so it was good news to us that obviously that right lung did a little bit more than we thought since when we took away using it, he did not like it at all. So we ended up moving it back and they made the decision at that point that we were gonna go ahead and 
try to get him down for a CT scan and to put tubes into him. So this video was dropping on the 5th. This was two days ago that this happened. So it was on the 3rd and that was actually his due date. Frustrating because you have to like put into perspective that they weren't even supposed to be born until two days ago. And so I had to like kind of bring myself back and be like patient with them. It's not their fault. Like they're doing the best that they can. It's just so hard seeing them struggle and I just want them to get better. But anyways, they decided we were going to switch Daxon back to the conventional ventilator and try and move him downstairs. When they initially switched him over, he was at 100% support on his oxygen needs and he basically, his carbon dioxide levels, they should sit in like the 50s for perspective for where he's at right now. And they shot all the way up into the 90s. It was not a good time. So they put him back on the oscillator and they were like, we're gonna try one more time this afternoon to see if we can go in and put him back on the conventional so that he can get moved downstairs. Remember the conventional ventilator is the one that we need him to be on in order to get him downstairs but it does give less support than the oscillator so it was tough to try and do that we put him on the conventional ventilator again yesterday for the second time and and tried to see what we could do his number for carbon dioxide was rising fast and the doctor said if it reaches 85 we're not taking him down to ct it got to 83 point something and then all of a sudden here it goes you just see it dropping by like 0.1 I mean we sat there and watched it trying to go down to like 65 for like over an hour finally got to the level where they felt like it was safe enough that they could take him down it was a mess it was a mess. I had to stay up with the other two boys because there's really nowhere like when he had surgery, there's a surgery waiting room, but for this procedure, not really anywhere for me to go. So I just had to stay upstairs with the other boys and it was so hard. Like my heart was just racing and just wondering what was going on. I honestly don't even remember how long it took because I was so out of it and just so stressed out, but I think it was like two hours, maybe a little bit less than that, maybe like an hour and a half. And he came back up. The doctor came over and talked to us and said he did amazing in his procedure. He was stable the whole time. Blood pressure looked good. His heart rate looked good. He barely even noticed that they were doing it. They had to paralyze him during this procedure so that he wouldn't move. And he was also obviously sedated and under anesthesia. When I tell you there was like 13 people with him when they wheeled him downstairs, it was just crazy because it's so scary watching like your baby get wheeled off with so many people surrounding them because you know like it's a big deal. And they also made the decision that, you know, they were going to put him into an isolation room that is basically a room that they could do like emergency surgeries and procedures in if they had to. Also scary seeing that your kid has to go to like a very critical room basically for in case he deteriorates. He came back up from this procedure and like I said the doctor told us he did amazing. She also said that they noticed that his left lung which is his good lung did not have the signs that they were thinking it would have of chronic lung disease. All three of the boys have chronic lung disease but his was showing very minimal effects of chronic lung disease and his right lung was showing that it did in fact have more healthy tissue than they thought. Such a blessing like God was definitely with us yesterday. I was a little bit concerned about how he would recover but an hour after surgery he was able to stay on the conventional ventilator. His oxygen needs went from 100% before surgery to 35% after surgery an hour after. His chest x-ray went from looking like all these bubbles to completely back to basically normal. Not 100% normal but pretty close and the pressures that he needed to keep his lungs basically open had dropped significantly. By the time that I talked to the doctor yesterday morning, so not even 24 hours after surgery, he had dropped completely off of his paralytic medication. He didn't need it anymore. He's on pain medications, obviously, like he went through <laughs> some pretty intense stuff, but his ventilator settings were clear down. I mean, down. Lower than what Ezra is sitting at right now. So if that tells you anything about how tough this kid is and also how sick he was. He went from needing like the maxed out support to almost back to his baseline, which is just insane to me. In this picture, you can see his chest tubes. They placed two of them. He had two really big pneumatoceles that they thought were one. They put a tube into one and it deflated, but the other part of it stayed big. So they knew that was a separate one. So they inserted two chest tubes. They also talked about the fact that there is one 
one more that has kind of stayed and it's not really getting any better. They're hoping with time, maybe with this suction that it will get better and it'll go down. But if it doesn't, we may look up, but if it doesn't, we may, you know, look at putting a chest tube into that one as well. Hopefully we won't have to, but he tolerated it so well. So I think if that's what he needs to get better, then we'll absolutely be able to do that for him. He does have some secretions coming out of his tubes, basically like bloody and infectious. So they have him on antibiotics still from the pneumonia. The pneumonia was getting better, but now we know he like had that pus and stuff in there. So that stuff's draining out and we have him on antibiotics. And once the cultures grow back, we'll see kind of if we need to adjust his antibiotics or if he's okay on the antibiotics that he's already on. Basically what they will do with these chest tubes is they will clamp them after a couple days and they will see if those pneumatoceles fill back up with air. If they do not, they'll turn the suction off because he has a constant suction going right now that's pulling all the air out of those pneumatoceles. So if it doesn't show anything, then they will turn the suction off. And then if they look at it again and still looks okay that they're not reforming, they'll take the chest tubes out. After they take the chest tubes out, the tissue basically where those pneumatoceles were open and where the chest tube is inserted should just close up and we should be done dealing with them hopefully. Fingers crossed, let's just pray because I cannot go through all that again with him. That was like so traumatic. But as of right now, he seems like he's recovering great. Even like his carbon dioxide, when I said yesterday it was in the 90s, it came back down to like the 50s and so that's a huge improvement for him. He is literally like the toughest kid. I can't believe all that he's been through and overcame and like I'm just so thankful God kept him with us. Like I can't imagine having lost him. I will continue to keep you guys updated on where he's at and how he recovers. Hopefully we can start getting this endema off of him. He's really puffy and swollen and he's huge. Like this is him before his first surgery and this is him yesterday. So it just shows like how fast he declined and just how sick he really was. I'm excited to like hopefully see his little face again soon and like what he actually looks like because he just hasn't been himself at all. I haven't got to hold him in a month, over a month, and that's been really hard on me too just because I want to bond with him and just love him and give him, you know, the same attention as the other boys. I'll be dropping a video in a couple days updating you on the other boys and then just a couple other general things with Daxon and what we're looking at with him as far as future plans. I'm also dropping a mental health video in a couple days and just kind of like telling you guys what's been going on with me and Braxton and where we're at with everything. I think it's like an important conversation and topic to have. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Thank you for supporting us, for loving us, for praying for us understanding like I cannot get back to all of your messages and comments and I just we just appreciate everyone so 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 much. I don't know where we would be without you guys' support. You guys have definitely helped us like hold on sharing your similar stories and just how we've encouraged you and people reaching out that are in similar situations and saying like we have encouraged them to keep going and, and we are just grateful. We're just blessed. We love you all so so much and I hope that you guys enjoyed this video and I will see you later on this week for a couple new updates. Thank you.